Okay, so I want to look at magnetic force. I want to model the motion of a charge in a magnetic field, and then I want to calculate the force and torque on a loop of wire in a magnetic field, a constant magnetic field. Now let me go ahead and say, this is part of my video series for uh, physics educators, physics students, to incorporate Python into their courses or their learning. And, and this is gonna be my last episode of that series. I'm still making videos, don't worry. But the playlist is actually pretty long now. I've gone through uh, the first and second semester of uh, introductory calculus level physics uh, and show you Python that you can do, uh, not the physics. I'm assuming that you have a, a grasp on the physics already. Uh, so when we look at magnetic force, there usually is other stuff in the uh, course. Actually, I just changed my mind. This is not my last video. I'm gonna make one more video. I told you I'd make a video on LRC circuits, and I'm gonna do that one next. So, so then, then that will end. And then there, yes, there's Gauss's law, there's Ampere's law, and stuff like that. And I think there's some really cool cal calculations you can do with that, and I have done that. However, I just don't feel like it's like undergraduate level for introductory students because it gets a little more complicated in the in the programming. Uh, even though I, I think it's super awesome, like I said. Okay, so let's look at two things in this one video. Uh, number one, a moving charge in a constant magnetic field. So if I have the magnetic field coming out of the page and I have a positive charge moving this way, then I can calculate the force. Uh, the magnetic force is going to be QV. That's the, the charge. I put a, did I put a vector over Q? That's weird. Uh, times the velocity vector QV cross B. And then I can, if I know the mass and the moment and the, uh, with just the mass, then I can use the momentum principle and I can say F net. I can calculate that net force is delta P over delta T. And this is what we did in the previous, um, in, in the previous semester, we did this a lot and we updated the momentum using the force. And, and so if you don't remember how to do that, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but go back and look at using momentum and forces to model the motion of an object. So I'm going to pick a charge. I'm going to pick a magnetic field and I'll draw one vector for the magnetic field and then we'll let it go and go on. After that, I want to find the force on a wire, uh, not just any wire. I'm going to take a loop of wire. And so it turns out that if you put a loop of wire in a ma constant magnetic field, the net force is zero. I want to show that. Um, I probably think maybe that should be a, a second video. Yeah, let's just do this, and then we'll do this as a second video. So I'll save this for part two. Okay, so let's jump over and make a, uh, a charge in a constant magnetic field, because they are, they are different. Okay, this is this is my uh, program for a the magnetic field due to loop. And I'm going to use this uh, for my second case. But let's just open up a new window and just start from scratch. Okay, new trinket, and I am using GlowScript v Python. So I guess that's three videos. That's this is the last video, and I'm actually doing three. This one, and then I'll do torque on a loop of wire, and then I'll do an LRC circuit. And then that's it for this playlist. There will be more. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to say KM equals uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. This is my, um, I don't even need that. Well, I'll put it in there anyway. Uh, so I need to first pick a magnetic field. Let's pick the magnetic field in the Z direction, which is out of the page like this. So I can say B equals vector. Uh, I'm really not sure about the magnitude of these things, so we can change it. Uh, 0, 0. Um, one tesla is huge so i'll put one and then i'm going to have a charge let's put that let's make this as an as a arrow to b scale equals uh, 0 0.1 and then uh, b arrow equals arrow uh, position i'm just going to draw one arrow for this is vector zero 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 uh, the axis is going to be b scale times b and let's make that yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. Let's run that. So there's my magnetic field. It looks kind of funny just because that's all there is, but that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> now we can make our charge. So let's say uh, I'm just gonna make it a ball. Ball is a sphere. Uh, its position is going to be equal to. I'm gonna. I'm thinking in my mind. It's like a. It's like a tiny little ball. So I don't want to make it. That has a length of 10 centimeters. So let's actually make that a centimeter long. I don't know why I'm just thinking small. We, it doesn't really matter. 
uh, the scale doesn't matter. So let's put this at, um, I think it's gonna, let's put it in the negative x direction. So it's gonna be negative uh, 0 0.02, 0, 0. And the radius is gonna be 0 0.005, uh, color is cyan. Make trail equals true. Now let's run that. Okay, so that's too big for my liking. Make it smaller. Okay, that looks good. Let's save this. Uh, charge in a magnetic field. Okay, now I'm going to need to give it a velocity and a mass. Uh, and here's where we may get out of control. So let's say, I, sh I could calculate this before I'm just gonna play it by, by ear. Let's say it has a mass of uh, 10 grams, so 0.1 kilograms, and it has a momentum of ball dot m times the vector. I'm gonna make it move in the positive y direction. So it'd be zero, um, let's just go with one zero. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now I can say t equals zero, dt equals 0 0.001, while t is less than five. Let's just try that. And, and I, I just wanna point out, I have one arrow for the magnetic field, but it's the same magnetic field everywhere rate of a thousand, so do run it in real time. Uh, step number one is to calculate the force. There's only one force on the object, so I can say F equals cross, oh, I don't give a charge. Um, ball dot Q, let's just call it Q. Q equals six times 10 to the negative six. Uh, yes, that's it. Okay, so it's gonna be cross uh, Q times V, but I'm gonna actually use momentum. So I can say ball dot P divided by ball dot M. I wanna update the momentum and that way I don't have to deal with velocity. So it's QV cross B. And the cross product's a built-in function in Python, so that's all I need to do. Okay, now I can use that force to update the momentum. Ball dot P equals ball dot P plus F times ET. And now I can update, let me make that a little bigger. I can update the position ball.pos, ball.pos, plus ball.p times dt divided by ball.m. So ball.p divided by ball.m is the velocity, and this is just the velocity update formula. Update time, t equals t plus dt. If you don't do that, the loop goes on forever. Okay, let's just see what happens. This may be crazy because I didn't preemptively calculate stuff because I'm a bad person. Okay, so it's going too fast. It didn't curve at all. Okay, so let's just increase the charge to a thousand times greater. It did turn. Okay, now let's make it go a little bit slower. 0 0.1, 0 0.11, that's fine. Um, hmm. I want it to turn more. I guess I can increase the magnetic field. Cube, I want to increase, or I can increase the charge. 100 times greater. Okay. There we go. And you'll see, I get fairly circular motion. Let's even see if I can make this look a little bit better. If it's actually a circle, it could be a rounding error. I think it is actually a circle. There you go. So the motion of a charge in a magnetic field, and that is in 3D. Okay, so now let's give it a velocity uh, in the in the, if I give it a velocity in the X direction, that will, that will just change it. That would still be a circle, I think. Let's just try that. Let's try 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Oh, comma, 0.1. Yeah, so that's nothing magic there. But let's give it some velocity in the Z direction. So let's say, um, 0 0.05 and you'll see now it does this helix because the uh, velocity in the z direction uh, the the momentum in the z direction doesn't change because the uh, the for the, the the magnetic fields in the z direction so when I take the cross product I don't get a force in the z direction so the velocity in the z direction stays constant and you end up with this nice spiral thing right here okay so if you want to you could actually measure look at that Wow. 
if you want to, you can measure the radius uh, of this by printing out the velocities at different points that we, or graphing this. Um, and you can see, you, then you could change the, uh, the magnetic field and shows that the, you can get this relationship between the angular, the radius of the circular motion and the magnet to the magnetic field and Q and V, but uh, I don't want to do, I just want to focus on the programming, not the, the physics. Okay, so there you go. Uh, the playlist is down below. The link to the playlist is down below. Uh, the link to the code, this actual code is there. So you can go edit it and do whatever you want and play with it uh, and use it for your students or do whatever makes you happy. Okay, so next, the next one's gonna be a lot more challenging and that's why I wanted to break it up. The force and the, uh, the torque on a loop of wire in a, const in a constant magnetic field. Okay, I'll, that'll be up next.